So, you want to draw a webcomic but you don't know where to start? Well, today I'll show you how I draw a couple of pages from scratch and by the end of this video you should also be able to draw your own. Little disclaimer, I'm not an all-knowing professional webcomic artist. The process I will show you is what works best for me, so you might have to adjust it to your own preferences. Most of the advice and tips, I've learned them from the comic classes I took university years back and others I've learned on my own along the way. Before we begin, let's make some coffee because it's gonna be a long day and we'll need that caffeine. While we sip on our coffee, I'll go over what this video will cover. 1. Choosing your story's theme. 2. Writing your story plus paneling, so how to make your page easy to read. 3. Sketching and doing the line art. Work smarter, not harder, use the tools available to your advantage. And finally, coloring and lettering, so how your choice of colors and font can affect the mood of your webcomic. Before we start, I would like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. This mini comic is part of the exclusive rewards of the Hot Cocoa tier of my Patreon. My patrons receive every month exclusive content such as sketches, work in progress of the projects that I'm working on, uh, monthly mini comics, and uh, voting on polls to decide what the next illustration or merch should be, and many other cool rewards. I'll leave the link in the description below so you can check it out if you want. Before starting to write your story, you need to define what genre it falls into. Romance, comedy, horror or adventure? Then, from there, what will be the theme of the story? For example, my story is about my two OCs, Luna and Nadir. It's part of the February reward of my Patreon, so I decided to go with romance as the genre and Valentine's Day as the theme. From there, you can start to write your story. I usually like to write it in the form of a script, so it's easier for me to visualize each panel and associate it with the speech. In addition to celebrate Valentine's Day, it was also meant to introduce my brand new OC, Nadia. Since, since it's a mini comic, I planned it to be no longer than two pages, so it should be concise and straight to the point. Valentine's Day date plus introducing Nadia. Once I have my script, I'll start paneling. Paneling is the step where you frame out your page flow based on your script. Since it's at the very beginning of the whole process, there's no need to be clean about it. I'll usually have a bunch of little rough doodles of the pages drawn next to the script, and then I'll choose from the best one. You usually want your first panel to establish when and where your story is taking place. For example, my first panel tells the reader when the story is taking place, so on Valentine's Day. Then the second shows where it's happening, so in front of a bakery store, and also it introduces our first character, Luna. Also, since we read from left to right, I've decided to place the sign here on the upper left corner of the panel. Um, I could have placed it here on the right corner, but because this is an important information, so to establish when the story is happening, I've decided to place it here so that this is the first thing that the reader is going to see. At first, when I was writing the script, the last panel was supposed to be two. So, one where you will have Luna looking up to the sky to check if it was snowing, and then the second one where she would look towards Nadir after he called her. But because I had restricted space with only two pages, um, I decided to merge the two. And to do so, I used the placement of Nadir's speech bubble to my advantage. As you can see, I placed it here, on the left corner of the panel, making it the first thing that the reader will see, and then the flow will bring us here to Luna looking towards him, Nadir, who is here in the right corner. So, by placing your bubbles cleverly, you can allow yourself to put two actions that would normally happen one after the other in the same panel. 
The second page main purpose was to introduce my new OC, Nadir. Um, that's why there's a big bus drawing of him here in the middle of the page. Um, I like to make important elements stick out of the panel frame so they can stand out more. However, this is very much a manga technique, so if you plan on doing western style comic, they usually have everything within the panels frame. Though, well, nowadays with the popularity of manga and webtoons, you have also western artists that mix um, those techniques in their comics, so honestly, you should be fine. I mean, I'm doing it, so yay! So one rule of speech bubble placement is that the bubble of the person speaking first should most of the time, if not always, be higher than the person speaking after. And if you noticed, I've applied this rule throughout the whole page. Even here in the first panel, uh, where Luna is the one placed before Nadia, since he is the first one to speak, not only his bubble is the first one, but also it's higher than Luna's, if you see here. So, and it also creates a nice flow of, you know, like, for the panel. Once you have established your page reading flow, you can start sketching. Um, I don't have much to say about sketching itself because, you know, everyone has their own way of doing so. Um, so instead, I'll talk about how you can work smarter and not harder, thanks to the many tools that you can get in Clip Studio, Clip Studio Paint's assets, especially the 3D models. So, like you can see, you have all sort of 3D objects, backgrounds and poses available there. Some are free and then others you do have to pay um, to download them. I used to not use 3D models in the past because of the stigma around it and how people will say, oh, it's cheating. And let me tell you, it is not. It's just another tool to help you making your art quicker. The only thing though um, that I will say is to not use them as an excuse to not learn your fundamentals. Using 3D models to draw poses without knowing at least the basics of anatomy won't be beneficial, beneficial to you in the long run. Same with using 3D backgrounds without knowing about perspective. So, be sure to learn or brush up on your fundamentals even while using 3D 3D tools. Oh my god, English is hard. Once you're done with your sketch, it's time to start the line art. The brush that I use for my line art is the Artemis HB. I downloaded it in the assets and I tweaked it a bit to fit my personal preferences. Usually I often end up liking my sketches more than my line art because they kind of lose uh, a bit of that organic messiness that my sketches have uh, so lately I'm trying to be more loose and focus less on having two perfect slash trips looking line art while still not being too messy you know uh, so it's kind of hard to find a balance between the two so I'm not where I would like it to be yet but I'll get there Okay, now it's time to put some colors. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. We've been drawing for a while now, so it's actually break time. This is something we often forget as artists because we're so invested when we're creating, but we need to take regular breaks 
you know, stand up, stretch, drink water, eat some snacks and do something else for a moment, just so you know we can come back to our pieces with fresher eyes. Okay, time to start again. So, on to the last stage, coloring. Your choice of colors will affect the mood of your story, so you should pick them accordingly. Since my story is a romantic one, I decided to go for warmer tones to convey that sense of warm connection between the two characters. Even the cooler colors, like blues, will be toned down to fit the palette. I usually start by blocking the main elements with a flat color, either by filling them manually or by using the unclose and fill lasso tool. The leader makes this process much quicker, but be sure that all your lines are closed otherwise it won't work. Since it's a comic, I try to keep the rendering to a minimum, otherwise it will be way too much work on the long run. For close-up though, I do add a bit more details to make them extra juicy. Now the last step, leathering. The main rule for comic leathering is to use sans serif fonts. This makes the text easier to read. Another rule is to use the same font for the entirety of the comic. You do have some exceptions where a different font can be used, for example when the character speaking is a vicious demon and you want to convey how, how vile its voice sounds. But overall, the same font should be used for all the characters. However, since I'm not planning on publish this mini comic and it's mostly for fun and for my patrons, I wanted to play around with different fonts. And that's it, the page is done. Um, this was my first time doing some sort of mini tutorial so it might not be the best but I hope you still enjoyed it and learned a few things along the way. Thanks for watching and until next time for the next video, bye bye!